Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and we are recording New Comic Book Day, so that means one thing. We have that bolo list, and we're going to talk about it right now with the bolo show. How's your week going so far, Jack? It's going well. You know, I'd love to be able to put some shine on this one and say that we have a great list for you this week with a lot of great hits, but it's not really the case. Uh, this week, for whatever reason, the big two are taking a week off, so we are left with what is left. Yeah, last week was killer. We had a bunch of great books came out. I walked in the comic book store this week. I felt like uh, Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. Um, you do plan to have comic books on this new comic book day, right? But either way, there's still some good ones on here. We can go through them right now. Starting with the first appearances for this week. And that wraps up the first appearance section. <laughs> <laughs> we had no confirmed first appearances on the list this week, but we're going to get right into the reader buzz section. Jumping right into the reader buzz section, we get that free comic book day edition from Robert Kirkman, and we're talking about firepower, right? Yeah, and this isn't, this was free today. It was originally supposed to be for free comic book day, which obviously got canceled because of the whole pandemic, but also today saw the release of the graphic novel for firepower. So you get kind of almost like this whole scout binge type of release from um, uh, Robert Kirkman and Chris Samney, where you get this uh, comic, which will probably serve as, I guess, the first appearance if this ended up being some sort of optioned character. Be, that would be interesting to see with the fact that the comic came out the same day as the graphic novel. But um, I definitely think people would rock, rock with the free comic book day issue. But it's also one to pay attention to, as people may have overlooked it, um, as happens with a lot of these giveaway comics. And there's always some stores that squirrel some away. Yeah, I know uh, Third Eye Milo Comic Store. They used up that space that they didn't have a bunch of new comics to put firepower in its place. That's for sure. They have plenty of them there. But um, haven't had a chance to read it. Full disclosure, I haven't had a chance to read anything this week. Busy day full of conference calls at the day job. But we have some great titles. This next one, some people had it on the release last week. And we're talking about that Bleed Them Dry from Vault. That was in our variant buzz list last week, right? That's right. That's right. And, and I don't know what, whether this was a distribution thing, but some people got it this week. Um, so you know, Midtown had it solicited this week. So it, it, this is another, we talked about this last week, but it, this is another fault series. You got the, uh, the pulp covers coming out now. Uh, cover A and B were the ones that were solicited now through Midtown this, for this week. Um, it, it, this is a, kind of a trend where we're seeing vault has kind of not had these releases get that big time buzz uh several in a row they've had like that great company great stories um but that tends to happen uh, a lot of times with mar secondary market buzz it, 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 things kind of tend to be based upon what we've been talking about lately so trying to get that breakout hit that's that's the next challenge for vault i think once they can get that then they can start seeing some trickle down to other stories. They had that with these Savage Shores and they, and they were able to parlay some of that momentum. It didn't really happen after the plot. So it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. Yeah, we've talked about, we talked about this one on Last Call. This is one that I picked up today that I'm looking forward to reading. And they have a couple other exciting titles coming up on the future. So it'll be exciting to see if they gain that momentum again because it only takes one great story. They have some Just great one. creative teams. And uh, yeah, we're big fans of Vault. So definitely be looking forward to those. But the next one that we're going to talk about is another indie book. We're talking about Ezekiel Himes, Zombie Hunter number one, which I probably said that name wrong, but that's how I read it. I think you said it perfectly right, as far as I can <laughs> tell. Um, yeah, this was one that was not on my radar, and then it was getting late posted a lot. Um, I know Andy Tomlin from the Indie Spotlight series, who's a contributor for the Simpsons Comics YouTube channel. He uh, was big on this one. And it's one of those things where I think it's small press. Um, once it gets a little bit of attention, books like this can shoot up to like $10, which is what we were starting to see with this book. Yeah, I actually saw some this morning before comic book stores opened going for about 12 to 14, listed for about 12 mm -hmm. to 14, put it that way. So, But the difficulty with something like this is I think a lot of it is just indicative of the week, right? It, my question is if we had a hot Venom or a hot Thor issue, if we had you know, some, some punchline stuff going on. Um, would this really be on people's radar? I'm not so sure. 
the next one we're talking about is one we did talk about on last call, and it's definitely one of the highlights that I was looking forward to picking up this week, and that's that Upshot AWA Devil's Highway number one. Yeah, the Upshot books, people keep giving them a chance on these number ones. We talked about this key is going to be how do they continue to drive readership beyond issue number one. But people, like I said, people are get hyped for them. And and every time a number one hits, it's it's consistently been a bolo list book. And again, the bolo list is comprised of the buzz that you guys are making on social media for these books. So Devil's Highway was a, one of the more talked about books I've seen from, from Upshot. Yeah, I think a lot of these indies benefited, like you just said, from the pick before. Yeah. Benefited from a slower week. I think this one garnered buzz either way, but definitely highlighted with with less releases coming out. And if you guys have read this, let us know in the comments what you think of this. I know a lot of people have talking about how much you like an Upshot. I know we talked about it being on our three down a couple weeks ago, but we love Upshot as well, and we hope that it gains that momentum back that it had before the whole shutdown stop and distribution. But the next one, or the last one we're going to talk about in the reader buzz, is that one from Image. It's a one-shot. We're talking about All-America Comics number one. This is another one when I was looking this morning before comic book stores opened. It was selling, listed for about $14, $15, which is great to see because I like to see it before. And then once comic stores open and people get books in hands, how many more get listed and how the price goes from there. But this one garnered a lot of reader buzz as well, right? Yeah, and I got to be honest with you, this was a major consideration for a long-term play of the week. And um, I went with the obvious choice, but there's a part of me that thinks that this is a better book. And I feel like because the book we're going to talk about for the long-term play, I think it is a good long-term play, but I think it has limitations. This is a book kind of with unlimited possibilities because while it's an independent book about a new character, it is essentially America Chavez. This is done by the creator of America Chavez, the Marvel character, who has essentially ripped off his own character and done an independent book. This was very common in the 90s. This was kind of what you did. Um, you created a character, you became synonymous with the character. You left, you maybe didn't have another idea or you still had so many ideas for that character that you didn't get to do before you left the company. So you kind of did your own sort of version of that. And so much of the original Image Comics was founded on those kinds of principles. And I, I kind of like this. And I look at America Chavez as a character who is only gonna go up, up is only going to be kind of more and more prominent. And I really wonder if America Chavez becomes like an A-list Marvel character one day, if she's really featured in the MCU, will this become like a cool afterthought back issue? Like, well, if you're grabbing all this America Chavez stuff, you also might want to pay attention to this book. With that, that wraps up the reader bus section. Real quick before we get into the next section, do us a favor, click that thumbs up button for us. It really helps us out in the channel. And if you haven't done so and this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. We have a lot of comic and pop culture content on this channel. So subscribe, click that bell, and that way you'll be notified whenever future content releases on the channel. But we're going to get right into it now with the variant buzz. Then the first book we're talking about in the variant buzz is that Killing Red Sonya number two, that Gorham variant, right? It had a regular trade dress cover, but this one was the Virgin variant version. Right. So you have the, the trade dress version or the Virgin really doesn't really matter. Um, I think you're still kind of getting that same effect. This is unique because I think it's an homage to a book that you don't see. I mean, I'm not going to say it's never been done, um, it, it, but I haven't seen it. At least I can't think of one off the top of my head, which is we're fans of, of homage covers. I think that um, they can really bring back some nostalgia feels, but there's just certain ones that are redundantly overdone. So you see, you know, your Hulk 181s and your um, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300s. And it's like, how many times can I see that? So to do this, you know, Batman and Spawn book um, is kind of a unique uh, book to kind of choose to do an homage for um so I, I think that that's what kind of got it, it this attention on this book um and uh it really doesn't surprise me and they've been doing a really good job with the the red sonia line on doing some of these like classic homage covers um and i think that we're gonna see a few more of them probably get talked about because they've solicited some covers that have the makings of the type of covers that'll get people's attention 
Then the next one, the variant buzz. This is one that a lot of people have been aware of and it's been gaining steam. We're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but this is that Urban Legends number 24. It had that Eastman 1 in 10 variant as well as that 1 in 25. I noticed that 1 in 10 variant being listed for 50 bucks already. Yeah, and we talked about this on last call. This was one that we said was our pick of the show. We told everybody exactly why. Um, the 1 in 10 had the kind of look that would be the type of book that would take off. Um, the 1 in 25 would be the type of book that I don't think many retailers at all are going to end up with. Um, and I think that these are two books that are only going to go up in value over time because that's kind of what happens with these Ninja Turtle books. They, they dry up. They end up in people's PCs. If these are not being bought by resellers, these are not being bought by flippers. These are being bought by collectors who are getting taxed by resellers and flippers. And they will not re-enter the market. So these books will just get scarcer and scarcer. I could have picked this one as long-term play, but it, 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 it kind of would have been uh, a, little, a little too obvious. We talked about this one on last call. Um, so, you know, this is one of those books that where I think you got to pay attention to this kind of stuff. We've been talking about these trends and it's another reason why, you, you know, you guys should check out simplemanscomics.com, check out that ebook where we're talking about a hundred plus great back issues um, to be on the lookout for. But we also talk about some trends in the hobby that tend to kind of play out over time. The book's available for $1.95. We're on the first volume. We're working towards finishing up that second volume, but you know, this, this IDW trend where when they've got those one in 25, especially when you're not talking about issue number one, when you're talking about a situation like this, where it's issue 24, um, you can really kind of see that this is a book that would get overlooked. And sure enough, it did. And that's why it's, it's a tough book to find now on new comic book day and going for the type of money you were just talking about, Brad. Speaking of being overlooked, the next one we're going to talk about, I think it was kind of overlooked too, especially up till release day. And I'm sure people probably saw this cover up and was like, holy crap. But we're talking about that Buffy yeah. Vampire Slayer number 15. I'm talking about that. And Fra I'll probably kill this name, but the Franey Incentive variant for it. Yeah, you're talking about a 1 in 25 virgin incentive cover um, that really is reminiscent of a Harley Quinn cover, like a classic Harley Quinn cover. Um, and there's only two currently listed on eBay. You've got one listed at $30, which I actually think is, is cheap compared to what this book has the potential to go for. Um, and then an auction starting at 99 cents, which is a VS copy though. So this is a book where I don't think a lot of people are going to qualify for this. And we've seen this with Buffy, some of these Buffy incentives. When they hit the home run with the cover art and, and people beyond the typical Buffy collector where you have maybe to a smaller degree of Ninja Turtles, it, it just the diehards are playing there so once you start adding in audience from outside of the diehards you're going to see the escalation in price then you, this cover art is is home run absolute home run cover art so you know i think it's exactly what you said brian where people didn't see it and then light comic book week people are going down midtown or tfaw or uh my comic shop wherever they buy their books and they're looking at the week's releases. And I mean, when you really just look for like stunning cover art, to me, this is probably the best of the bunch. Yeah, like especially online when you're just scrolling down, not really looking at title, seeing cover. I'm sure a lot of people stopped on this one because kudos to, to the artist on this. this is a gorgeous cover. Yep. That wraps up the variant bus section we're gonna get into now. Jack's long-term play. Then another, I won't say obvious one, but one that a lot of people had on their list this week. I'm probably, I'm sure it's probably the headliner of New Comic Book Day, but for good reason, Jack again has this on his long-term play. And we're talking about that Negan Lives number one. Yeah, I mean, and look, this is obvious. Um, and it's, it seems almost too obvious. But here's the thing is I want to make a point about The Walking Dead. Um, and before I do, we'll, we'll talk about the nuts and bolts of this, because you're talking about essentially a surprise book, right? One people didn't see coming that Robert Kirkman dropped, and it was similar to the Die, Die, Die release, where you didn't put the order in for it. Um, these books, based on your previous ordering, were already going to you. Uh, they're free for retailers. They get to sell them at cover price and uh, make the revenue. It was kind of Robert Kirkman's way of making amends for how he felt he ended the series, um, which I don't think he had to do that, but great. Um, two variants 
associated with this. You get the, the there's a silver and a gold. Silver going for about fifty, gold going for about two hundred. Um, so definitely commanding serious prices on the secondary market already. The value of this book to me really is the fact that um, you're talking about essentially another final issue, right? The, the, I think that they can, we'll see more one shots and things like that. I really find it hard to believe a property as big as Walking Dead, we're not going to see any books printed. Um, so I think that this could be the start. And it shows the popularity, right? It shows the fact that a Walking Dead book comes out and everybody wants it. Everybody's talking about it. It also helps that Negan's one of the coolest characters created. And played by one of the best actors. Right. You're talking about, that perfectly fits that character. Perfectly. Perfectly. The best casting on the entire show. But you're talking about uh, a, a true villain who then almost becomes an anti-hero and, and really takes you on that journey. Um, and just one of the best written characters that I've ever read in comics. And then, yes, one of the best I've ever seen on a television show play out. Um, and people wanted to see how this was going to end and people wanted to see where because Negan wasn't involved in the ending of the walking dead, people wanted to see that. So Robert Kirkman brought you into that. That is awesome. I, I'm, I'm, I think that the idea and concept behind this book are great, but people in the comic collecting community brand, they're ready to, to, to bury the walking dead. Um, they're ready to, you know, call it a day on it. And yes, I, we've talked about it. I mean, the secondary market price is on a lot of those key characters from the early part of that series. It's tough um, because, you know, they've already had their arc in the spec cycle. But at the same point, you look at AMC, and we've heard this point made before. What else does AMC have? Uh, AMC is not sitting here on a plethora of IP that is just driving people to their channel. Uh, the Walking Dead is the, the flagship. Unless they make uh, a Mad Men comic. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, the flat and Mad Men's not coming back like at this point. So, um, the, the flagship thing on that channel is The Walking Dead. And they, we've already know that they've signed contracts with several of the actors to expand the universe beyond just the two TV shows that exist right now into, um, movies and, and so on and so forth. We're going to see kind of almost solo adventures that they've opened the door for origin stories, all kinds of different things we're going to see. So I really believe that the walking dead is going to be um, a kind of key part of the lexicon for a long time. And it's always going to make these comics relevant. Um, it, will they ever see the heat and height that they did um, from the past? Probably not, but at the same point, you, we live in the era of streaming services, and like my children were infants when The Office went off the air, but now they love watching Office reruns. And you're able to do that because you're not waiting for those reruns on television, you're able to watch on Netflix. And you'll be able to do that with shows like The Walking Dead for all of eternity. And I think that there's not gonna come a time where that show is gonna go, totally go away and not be relevant. Um, and especially with the new products uh, that they're coming out with. And then they're certainly going to have uh, companion items in stores. So I wouldn't even be surprised if one day we see a Fear the Walking Dead comic. Um, I, I think anything is... is or Daryl. Yeah. Or, or yeah, a Daryl story. Anything is possible at this point. So um, because of that, I think the thing to pay attention to if you're looking long term, the variant market can always be difficult um and i think the reality is that some of these prices may drop on the variants uh, but the cover price book the five dollar cover price book it's really just being sold for cover price um it's a book that i think long term could be a twenty dollar book and, and, and because it's going to get overlooked as everybody chases those variants that always happens um and retailers they they're not putting stock into it because it was given to them for free which is good so you don't have to worry about them kind of jacking the price up and they've got the variants to do that to all they want so you know that's something to pay attention to that's why this is my choice um not everything is something that you're gonna be able to buy for cover price it has hundred dollar capability like i said about this earlier this one has a ceiling and i feel like about twenty dollars is probably about that ceiling, but you really can't complain when you're talking about, you know, like a 400% profit on a book. Um, and I think you do have that capability with this book. Yeah. I can see people, like you said, going back and watching this again, just like 
every three years or so, I pretty much go back and rewatch The Wire all yeah. over again. But you talk about like this, um, the collector and the speculator community, but there is some diehard Walking Dead, Skybound fans of those Facebook groups out there. I'm talking they like ravenous over some of this stuff. Yeah. I think those are the ones that are going to kind of keep this alive. And another great thing is, the show, we haven't even gotten the finale for this season. It's still waiting to be out there. In the past two seasons, if you haven't been watching Walking Dead, the past two seasons have been fantastic. The Whisper War and everything, it's awesome. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you go back and do that. But that's Jack's long-term play again this week, guys. Let us know in the comments about the whole Bolo list. This was a slow week, but I think there's some, some gems in here, especially with the Ninja Turtles, the Devil's Highway, um, that All-America comics. Let us know what books you guys picked up. Let us know what got what you thought should be on the list that maybe didn't make the list because we always say this is social this is buzz that comes from you guys that goes on this list right absolutely yeah there's, some, there's books i like that didn't make the list uh reaver number nine for one yeah so with that being said guys it's been the bolo show this is brian jack from superman's comics we'll see you guys in the next video <laughs>